Hello everyone, welcome to Easy Physics. Today we are going to look at the basics of alternating current circuits. While learning this topic, we are going to use teaching with reasoning. So the learning, learning objective for this topic is, you are going to show an understanding of the period, frequency, peak value and root mean square values, both for current and voltage. So let's start our reasoning. Why do we call it alternating current? Or what, what is the difference between the DC and AC current? So to answer, these two questions are related to each other. Uh, in a DC circuit, we have a battery and it is connected to a resistor and the current is flowing in the circuit and the change of the current with the time is steady, it's constant, it's not changing. Similarly, the voltage is not changing. Okay, this is voltage and this is current. So this graph is both for current and voltage. On the other hand, if you have an alternating current circuit, this is the voltage source. If you connect it to a resistor or any other alternating current circuit element, then now in this case, in this case, the current is going to once flow in this direction and then it's going to move in the opposite direction. The current is going to oscillate, it's going to change the direction with the time. So the change of the current or the voltage with the time is going to be something like this. It's going to be a sine function. So this is the basic difference between the DC and AC current. How does an AC source work? For this lesson, just I will simply explain it. Next lesson, I will explain the details of AC generator. Now, assume you have a magnet and you have another magnet here. And this is the N pole and this is the S pole. There is magnetic field lines from N to S. If we insert a coil in between these two magnets and if we rotate this coil along this axis okay by some power maybe by hydroelectric power by uh, wind power solar power if you rotate this coil in the in between the two uh, magnets we are going to get a current which is flowing in the the current is going to be induced in this coil once in this direction and in that direction as the uh, as the coil rotate in between the two magnets in, in the magnetic field the direction of the current which is induced because of the uh, faraday's law of induction the direction of the current is going to change uh, back and forth it is going to be something like this as i said before so this is the basic description of alternating current source what is period and what is frequency? If the current and the voltage are always changing, then what is the period and frequency in this case? The period is a time to complete one oscillation. For example, if you are oscillating on a swing, okay, it will move back and forth like this. Okay, So if you start from here, it moves to that direction, to that side, and then move back to the initial position, the time passed is called one, uh, one period. In the, in the case of voltage or current, now assume this is the voltage change of change of voltage with the time it is zero and then it becomes maximum and then it becomes zero again and then it becomes minimum and then it becomes zero again so this is the one complete oscillation of the current in the circuit in, in, in an alternating current circuit is going to be something like this so the current is initially zero it will increase increase and increase it will increase in this direction and it will reach a maximum value and then it will decrease in this direction as shown here, it will increase and it will decrease in the same direction. It will, be, will become zero and then it will move back. It will increase in the opposite direction. It will reach a maximum value and then it will be zero again. So this is one complete oscillation. On the other hand, the frequency of oscillation is the number of oscillation per unit time. If your unit time is second, for example, what is the number of the oscillation in one second? For example, if you are on a swing, what is the number of oscillations, for example, in one hour? If your unit time is hour, then the frequency is going to be, uh, <clears throat> I mean, rotations or cycles per hour. And in the case of the uh, voltage or current, a changing voltage or a changing current, I mean, the alternating current in the alternating current circuit, the frequency is the uh, number of, I mean, the number of oscillations. I mean, this is one full oscillation. How many oscillations of this kind in one second or in one minute or in one hour? It depends on your unit time. So there is a relationship between uh, frequency and uh, uh, period. T is equal to 1 over F or F is equal to 1 over T or, or F times T is equal to 1. 
So the um, SI, standard international unit for frequency, is the cycle per second, and we call it hertz. So uh, the unit for the frequency is hertz. So one hertz is equal to one over second, or second to the negative one. This is the unit of the frequency, it's hertz. Let's solve an example. A medical, imaging, uh, a medical imaging device produces ultrasound by oscillating with a period of 0 0.5 microsecond. So the period of the oscillation t is equal to 0 0.5 microseconds. It will be equal to 5 times 10 to the negative 7 seconds. So we know that the frequency is equal to 1 over t. It will be 1 over 5 times 10 to the negative 7. And this will give us 2 times 10 to the 6 hertz. This means that the ultrasound device is oscillating, uh, is producing a sound with a frequency of 2 times 10 to the 6 hertz. The next question is, if your heart rate is 120 beats per minute during an exercise, what is the time per beat in units of seconds? Now here we know that the frequency is given, it is equal to 1 over 20 and 1 over mean, I mean 20, 1 over mean. This is the frequency of the heart, uh, heart rate. So how can we find the period? We know that the period is equal to 1 over f, which is going to be equal to 1 over 120. So this is going to be in terms of um, minutes, I mean seconds, I'm sorry, so, I'm sorry, minutes. And we need to find it in terms of seconds. So to change it to seconds, we need to multiply 1 over 20, 1 over 20 with 60. So this is going to give us 0 0.5 second. It means that the period of the beat of, uh, beat of our heart in this kind of exercise is going to be 0 0.5 second. Let's look at the peak average and root mean squared values. What is the peak value? The peak value is the maximum value attained by an, by an alternating quantity during one cycle. If you have, for example, your voltage is oscillating like this. I'm sorry, this is not a good graph. Let me draw another one here, sorry. Let me start from zero. So it goes up and then oscillates down and then it moves like this. Here is the maximum value. This is the peak value, V peak. And this is also a peak value, but this is a negative value. This is maximum peak value and this is minimum peak value. The average value of such an oscillation is the average of all instantaneous values of an alternating voltage or currents over one complete cycle. If you have one complete cycle like this, the zero becomes maximum and then it becomes minimum and then it becomes zero again. This is one complete cycle. So the sum of this current, I mean, if this is the voltage, what is this voltage? How much it is? How much is this voltage? How much is this voltage? How much this voltage? How much this voltage? So as you see, you we have uh, infinite number of voltages. So all the voltages here are they have positive values, and all these voltages here will have negative values. So if we sum all these positive values with all these negative values, it will be equal to zero. So the average value of this function is equal to zero. So what is RMS value? RMS value is the effective value of the alternating uh, current. What does the effective value of the alternating current? Let's explain it with an example. Uh, so if we have two identical uh, light bulbs here and here, one of them is connected to the DC current source and the other one is connected to alternating current source. The, if the brightness of these two, if the brightness of these two bulbs are equal to each other, it turns out that, for example, if this is six volt, the RMS, VRMS value of this uh, source is also 6 volt. You know the voltage here is constant with the time. The voltage here is constant with the time. It's not changing, sorry. So the voltage here is not changing, it's constant with the time. But the voltage here is changing with the time. Okay, so since it is changing uh, the, with the time, what is an effective value of this uh, changing uh, voltage? It is called um, VRMS value of the voltage or the current. Or in other words, it is the equivalent steady DC value which gives the same effect. Okay, so how do we calculate the root mean square value? For this, please look at 
this change of the current with the time this is the sine function so the average value of this function is equal to i average here will be equal to zero as i explained before so uh, but why the average value of this function is zero because all positive values here and all negative values here are canceling each other so it is similar for other cycles uh, to get rid of the uh, zero value why because this is a disturbing case uh, in this is this is the result of mathematics but uh, also now we are going to use mathematics to get rid of this disturbing case uh, so we take the square of this function if you take the square of something even though it is it has a negative value for example square of negative 2 is equal to 4 similarly the square of 2 is also is equal to 4 so if you take the square of this function the function is going to be something like this and all values are going to be positive in this case so now we don't have any negative values so as you see all we have positive value but in this case if we take i average in this case it will be equal to i squared divided by 2 and in this case uh, the the unit of the current is ampere, amperes so it will be ampere squared but we need we need the average value which ha which has uh, uh, which has a unit equal to ampere so so for to get uh, an to get an average value actually it's not equal average value but root mean square value of this function we need we need to take the square root of this one so i rms will be equal to square root of i squared divided by 2 so we will get i divided by 2 square root of 2 so uh, as you see uh, this is the way to calculate root mean square speed first we have a function okay so we take the square of this function okay then we find the average value for this function it is going to be something like this but this average value is not uh, what we uh, are looking for then we take the square root of this one why because we have we have take we have take the square now we take the square root so we get rid of the negative values and uh, and now we are going to have uh, I, uh, I RMS value or V RMS value it's also going to be equal to V over square root of 2 actually this is V0 and I0 they are the peak values we call the peak values I0 or V0 so uh, V RMS or I RMS value is going to be something here this value is going to be closer to between the average value and the maximum value so as you see the root mean square current is going to be equal to i over square root of 2 and it's approximately 0.707 i0 i0 is the peak uh, current similarly the root mean square voltage will be equal to uh, v0 divided by square root of 2 as i explained so it's equal to 0.707 v0 why do we need rms value we need a, a, an RMS value because uh, the current in alternating current circuits it is changing. It's changing with the with the with the time. The current or the voltage is changing with the time. So uh, when this current is changing, if you connect it to a circuit, if you connect it to an alternating current circuit, uh, if for example this is a heater, it heats up the environment. So the current is going to flow to that direction, and that direction is going to move back and forth. The direction of the current is not important uh, in heating the, uh, the the resistance so while the electrons are moving in this direction they are going to collide with the atoms and the, uh, the, the the resistor is going to heat up if it moves in the opposite direction again the electrons are going to uh, collide with the atoms again it's going to heat up so the direction is not important but here when we show the graph like this if we take the average value the average value is going to be zero in this case so mathematically it shows a zero value if you take the average of this function but physically as i explained it here it heats up i mean the the heater is heating up it gives heat to the around it heats up okay so so the average value if the average value is zero then we shouldn't get any heat energy from the current but really we, we get it it means that there is an effective value of the current in the circuit uh, and also it is called e effective it is equal to e I mean current RMS value so if you we have such a, a function it may be the function of the current or the voltage the average value is going to be this is going to be the average value which is zero but root mean square value is going to be equal to something like this and it is somehow smaller than the peak value but it is closer to the peak value 
as I said, it is approximately IRMS is equal to 0 0.707 I0. I0 is the maximum value. Uh, VRMS is equal to 0 0.707 V0. Let's solve an example and then finish our topic. Okay. A typical household uh, circuit operates with an RMS voltage of 120 volt. So the voltage in your houses is the VRMS voltage. It is the voltage. It is the VRMS voltage. Uh, so uh, we are asked to find the, what is the maximum value. So from the earlier uh, formulas, the maximum value is going to be equal to square root of 2 VRMS. It will be equal to square root of 2 times 120 and it will be approximately equal to 170 volt. This is the peak value and this is the VRMS value which we use in our houses. Okay, let's look at a conceptual question. Uh, I have a heater of 240 volt and 50 hertz. I would like to this heater to be used with 240 volt but 60 hertz frequency. It means I want to I do not want to change the voltage but I want to change the frequency of the source. Assume we have a source, alternating current source, and it is connected to a heater. This is our heater and 200, 240 volts. And the frequency of this source is equal to 50 hertz. What will happen to the heating effect of this source if we increase the frequency to 60 hertz? So this is a question for you. Please think about it and write it answers, uh, write it answer or uh, your comments uh, at the bottom of this video. Okay, thank you for listening. See you in the next lesson.